please welcome to the stage, Dr. Gregory Avicola. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Greg Avicola, and I am going to talk to you about a program called Mo Mobile Force Protection, or MFP. Um, I'm a program manager in the Tactical Technology Office. TTO focuses on larger system engineering and integration challenges, which, if successful, disrupt current methods or demonstrate novel solutions to problems. Typically, TTO works larger programs that prototype novel solutions at a relevant scale. So DARPA recently finished an unclassified effort known as Mobile Force Protection, which I'm going to describe what it was, how we developed the concept, and sort of walk you through what a TTO program looked like for a demonstration of that concept. So starting with the problem space, uh, drones, or what the Pentagon calls unmanned aerial uh, vehicles, UAVs, are ubiquitous. But for context, you know, 15 years ago, they were niche. This is a picture of the original Parrot drone that was sold in 2010 to provide some context. And yet in 2022, everybody in this audience has undoubtedly seen, if not actually flown a drone themselves. Um, it's probably no surprise that threat actors have also started thinking about how to weaponize drones. So for example, here you see footage of small explosives being strapped to a drone that are flown over a target and dropped. Simple, but pretty scary if you're those soldiers. And in more recent news, you've probably seen footage similar to this from Ukraine. Um, so other government and commercial entities have and still have ongoing counter UAS efforts. But most are focused on the threats of today, whereas DARPA's mission is to inflict and pre prevent technological surprise. So what is the difference between the threat of today and the future threat for this problem, for MFP? When MFP started, we envisioned the future threats as follows. One, Threat UAS systems that could not be G GPS or radio link jammed as a simple countermeasure. In other words, a drone aircraft that, at least for the last part of its mission, could autonomously classify at its target and fly to intercept it. Um, two, threat drones that would be deployed in numbers to create a coordinated attack. Um, three, threat UAS systems that could be employed in regions where collateral damage is unacceptable. Imagine that you need to negate a threat drone in the middle of a city, for example. Four. Most drone defense systems conceptually are thought to operate statically, like defending a fixed point, like a stadium. However, there are many mobile targets that need defending, and mobile targets are just as easily targeted by a fast-moving drone as a stationary location. So this envisioned solution could be described as something that requires a small form factor capability that could act autonomously to defeat large numbers of threat drones at range without using explosives or bullets. This was the challenge that we envisioned to provide to performers. So more often than not, a DARPA TTO program, we have a vision of what the solution might look like, but we also want to provide lots of room to explore and for performers to develop concepts before we down select on a final solution. So our starting point was developing a conceptual vision of what that solution might look like to shape the program. Because MFP must uh, operate autonomously, it must be like any agent, it must be able to sense, decide, and act. And so the system therefore needed to be thought about with the following goals in mind. We must detect drones at a tactically useful range, a few miles, but fast enough that we could also detect the drones that pop into view quickly and deal with them. We needed 360 degree coverage. We need to be able to operate day or night and with robustness to the environment. Um, we must detect and track many targets simultaneously. So a sensor that requires slewing and staring might not be as desirable given the time factors I just described. The autonomy must detect and classify targets, form tracks, rank threats without human input if required. If a human is required to sort out sensor detections, the human could very quickly be overloaded and overmatched when dealing with multiple threats that appear at close range. However, the automation needs to be a robust. It cannot easily be confused by birds, decoys, or a bunch of things out there that aren't drones. It also is extremely useful if the system can be modularized and scalable to different solutions. So for example, one might want to improve or adapt the system architecture for new sensors, for different locations, different sensor modes, different effectors, different numbers of effectors, et cetera. So how do you make it modular? And lastly, we envision multiple layers of defense and a heterogeneous solution space to provide different defensive boundaries around different operating regimes. Generally, uh, 
the flexibility of a design is useful characteristic of a DARPA demonstration to allow the technology to adapt to the specific needs of the end user, whoever that end user might end up being. So starting with that vision of the solution space, we created a program in which multiple performers were enabled to experiment towards an integrated solution. In the case of MFP, this activity was conducted over three phases. So phase one focused on subsystem exploration. In the sense arena, performers were asked to develop sensor package concepts to cover 360 degrees simultaneously, provide classification as well as detection and tracking capability. Um, in the ACT arena, performers were asked to demonstrate techniques that could be used for UAS mitigation, low cost per shot, deep magazines, and most, most hard, low collateral damage risk. And lastly, in the decide arena, performers were asked to show how they would glue those two pieces together into a system concept, approaching the challenge of how do you combine the sensors and effectors conceptually together without the human being required to make the classification, tracking, repairing decisions. After passing the bar for phase one, two performers moved forward into the second phase. In the second phase, the performers were expected to take their system of system concepts and actually merge them together into a single system prototype. That prototype did not need full functionality at this point. It did not, for example, need to be road mobile, surrogate sensors may still be employed, things like that. But um, demonstrate the overall concept. We selected one performer to go forward into phase three based upon the strength of their design and performance in phase two. And DARPA phase three performer spent the last year of the program taking all the lessons that they had learned and the data they had collected in the earlier phases and put it together in a final demonstrator. Conceptually, that hardware software package could be configured to work with any system that could carry about a ton of payload and provide a few kilowatts of power. You could think of that as a small boat, a pickup truck, a JLTV, the, you can see here the form factor we chose to use was a Humvee, which you're probably all familiar with. So the sense component of this demonstration included a radar system provided of commercial off-the-shelf components, but a phased array radar system, uh, relatively low-cost phased array radar system. And in addition, a 360-degree long-wave infrared search and track sensor to complement the radar in the parts of the space that the radar would have been challenged. For the ACT component, the demonstration concept had multiple layers of defense. An outer layer consisting of radio jammers to take down easy threats, middle layers of interceptors to fly out and engage targets at range, and inner layers for point defense. For our demonstration system, we focused on that middle layer to demonstrate the ability to have our interceptors go out and engage targets. Well, uh, this, this was one with two dissimilar interce uh, interceptor vehicles, Cougar, a high-powered axial copter to provide dense inner defense, and Morpheus, a fixed-wing uh, engagement solution to have higher speeds and engage at longer range. Both interceptors were reusable and designed to negate threats with no collateral damage. And lastly, the automated decision engine glued all this together. Developed and demonstrated, this married the components together in a coordinated whole that allowed the operator to sit on the loop making overall command decisions, but does not need the human to detect, classify, or prioritize threats. Based upon the threat priority and kinematics, it determines the best interceptor to pair with the, the threats. The interceptors fly autonomously to the targets, engage with, or detect with their onboard sensors, and go into a closed loop engagement where the interceptor UAV autonomously engages the target. The automated decision engine can then task that interceptor to move on to the next threat or return to base as needed. For the last few minutes, as I've been describing the end system, you've seen some movies play behind me in the background. What you have seen are examples of the system being tested in the phase three demonstration that took place at Eglin Air Force Base approximately a year ago. Um, you may have seen humans riding around in the truck as a driver or for data collection and safety. The car isn't autonomous, but the system was. All the engagements you just saw, including the ones you're seeing right now, um, multiple interceptors versus multiple threats occurred in a completely autonomous fashion. Additionally, during weeks of testing, our system never engaged something that wasn't a real UAV, despite the radar easily detecting distant aircraft, circling, vul circling vultures, excuse me, the system was not fuel fooled. The um, autonomous classification, a key problem and a significant challenge, worked extremely well. So the goal of any DARPA program is to transition the technology to the next step. For TTO, that often means transitioning a demonstrator concept vehicle to an office that can take the technologies and turn that into an acquisition program. 
For MFP, the technology you see here was transitioned to the US Army Combat Development Command, that's a mouthful, DEVCOM, and the Joint Counter Small Unmanned Aircraft Systems Office, also a mouthful, called JCO. Those offices are taking the technologies and solutions developed within MFP and integrating them into legacy and future systems. Thank you very much for your time, and if you have any questions, I'll be back there at the next break.